we want to acknowledge the Ramaytush Ohlone people who are the traditional custodians of this land. We pay our respects to the Ramaytush Ohlone elders, past, present, and future, who call this place, the San Francisco Peninsula, their home. We are proud to continue their tradition of coming together and growing as a community. We thank the Ramaytush Ohlone community for their stewardship and support, and we look forward to strengthening our ties as we continue our relationship of mutual respect and understanding. Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for responding. I appreciate that. <laughs> Welcome to the 2023 UCSF Graduate Division Commencement Ceremony. My name is Nikkei Blake, and I have the distinct honor of serving as the Dean of the Graduate Division. And today, I have the added pleasure as serving as your Mistress of Ceremony. Chancellor Hoggett, distinguished guests, graduates, families, friends, the village, and those joining us on live stream, welcome to the 2023 commencement. I want to thank the members of the UCSF leadership team who are in attendance today and have joined us on the platform. As I introduce each member, I'm going to ask that you stand to be acknowledged, and I'm going to ask that the audience hold your applause until all the leaders have been instructed. Now, that's your first piece of instruction today. Let's see if we can abide by it. <laughs> Chancellor Sam Hoggard, Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Catherine Lucy, Dean of the School of Dentistry Michael Reddy, Dean of the School of Medicine Talmadge King, Dean of the School of Pharmacy Catherine Giacomini, Assistant Dean of Diversity and Learner Success in the Graduate Division, Dean Duncan. It always breaks down there. It always breaks down right there. <laughs> and President of the Graduate Division's Alumni Association, Carla Washington. Thank you all so much for being here. We are truly one UCSF. I would also like to welcome and recognize two very brave, hardworking faculty mentors who will join Assist Assistant Dean Duncan in presenting the graduates as they are hooded. You will see why they are brave in a little while. Dr. Christopher Carpenter, Associate Professor of Pediatrics and Director of the Master's Program in Global Health Sciences. And Dr. Ta Todd Neisel, Associate Professor of Anatomy and Co-Director of the PhD Program in Developmental and Stem Cell Biology. Thank you both. <laughs> Today we gather to celebrate 349 of UCSF's finest, who will receive their master's or doctoral degrees. 150 of them have joined us here today. Let me share a little bit about some of the characteristics of this class. About one third of this class are natives of the state of California. <laughs> 78% of the graduating class 
are U.S. citizens and permanent residents hailing from 25 states across the Union. 22% are international students representing 21 different countries across the world. We have students from Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Korea, Mexico, Mongolia, Saudi Arabia, and Taiwan, to name a few. 19% of our students are from historically marginalized groups, and 11% of the graduating class are the first in their families to receive a college degree. Last but not least, this year we have the honor of celebrating the inaugural graduating class and cohort from the Masters in Genetics Counseling. Truly, truly impressive. This group of graduates quite literally assembled from across the country and indeed around the world with a diversity of backgrounds, but with one common mission to advance world health. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great joy to present to you the graduating class of 2023. Our graduates came to UCSF on a journey, a quest of sorts. It's a quest often filled with uncertainty, sometimes loneliness, sometimes scary. It's certainly not well-defined, but oh, the thrill of a new discovery or an intervention that has had an impact. But have you ever wondered and now I'm really talking to the village. Have, have you ever wondered what exactly is it that they do? <laughs> have, graduates, have, 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 your, have, have your family members, your village ever asked you, when are you going to find a real job? <laughs> I'm taking from the laughter that you have. Taking nothing away from the phenomenal accomplishments of graduates in UCSF's other schools, I want to take a moment to just appreciate how very different the journey of a graduate student is. First, the context. The graduate division is home to approximately 1,700 graduate students and more than 1,100 postdoctoral scholars. Graduate students matriculate into one of 20 PhD programs in disciplines that include cell and molecular biology, medical anthropology, global health, sociology, biophysics, pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacogenics, and oral and craniofacial sciences. The vision is also home to 12 master's programs, two professional doctorates, and four certificates. Graduate students matriculate into these programs, young or young at heart, excited, eager, and filled with curiosity. For many of them, this journey begins as an apprentice, diligently, learning from dedicated faculty, mentors, and others who may have targeted, and others may have a targeted course of study with a network of scholars. In all cases, however, the student quickly arrives at a place where it is the student, your graduate, who is forging symbiotic relationships, generating novel solutions to some of the mo world's most vexing problems in health, dentistry, pharmacy, public policy, social structures, among others. In these endeavors, they build their own roadmaps, testing their ability to identify creative ways to uncover 
new knowledge. It is the spirit of exploration and unrelenting curiosity that contributes to the richness of research enterprise here at UCSF and makes UCSF a perpetual hub for discovery. For that, 2023 graduates, we thank you. <clears throat> the accomplishments of our graduates would not occur without the support, guidance, collaborations, and allyship of their faculty mentors. It is their passion for their discipline, their love for teaching, mentoring, and their tireless oversight of these graduates that made today possible. Would all the faculty mentors please stand? My note says, ladies and gentlemen, please help me celebrate them, but you did it already, so thank you. Thank you very much. Because of the importance of our faculty mentors each year at commencement, the Graduate Division Student Government presents the Outstanding Faculty Mentor Award to a faculty member who not only instructs, men, instructs but mentors, inspires, nurtures, and helps students to take the next step in their careers. It is my pleasure to introduce two of our students, uh, Samai, sorry, Saima Ismail and Kirsten Thungjajin, graduating students in the Healthcare Administration and Interprofessional Leadership Master's Program, who will present the 2023 Outstanding Mentor to Adjunct Assistant Professor Mike Tegman on behalf of the Associated Students of the Graduate Division. Hello, everyone. I'm Saima Ismail, one of the graduates of the Masters of Science, Healthcare Administration and Interprofessional Leadership, MS Hale program. It gives me immense pleasure and honor to present this outstanding faculty mentor award to Mike Tegman, the assistant adjunct professor at the UCSF MS Hale program. I had the opportunity to work with him for the past year on my capstone project. All the members of my cohort and previous cohort would agree that our capstone project, which is an evidence-based quality improvement project, wouldn't be possible without the guidance and the, uh, without the guidance and support of Mike. He selflessly dedicated his time and energy so we could accomplish our goals. He was always there to help and explain whether it was a driver diagram, the PDSA cycle, the project measures, or the run and the control charts. Mike, your guidance and shared experience have been invaluable. I'm grateful to have you as my teacher and mentor. You always helped me, trusted me, and encouraged me to do the best in every step of my project. And you were always excited to hear the progress of my project. Thank you for going above and beyond. <laughs> On behalf of my cohort, I would like to congratulate Mike on this well-deserved recognition. And I will now ask Kristen to share her thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. 
good morning. You responded to her, but not to me. Insulted. <laughs> good morning, esteemed faculty, graduates, you did it, um, and our village. Uh, thank you. My name is Kristen Thungachin uh, from the Masters of Science in Healthcare Administration and Interprofessional Leadership. To say that three times fast. Um, I came into this program with a mission to change the world. I said, Mike, I want to improve the quality of death in the ICU. And I want to do it because people deserve kindness and compassion in life and in death. Mike, Mike said, let's do it without casting doubt because he leads with compassion. Through the tears of a hysterical graduate student, Mike continued to say, remember the compassion. He changed the lives of 422 patients in my ICU this year. Most importantly, patients received better deaths because of Mike's work with me. Mike mentored all his students this way. Mike, you have given us life jackets to navigate the healthcare system and make changes. And your students are honored to present you with the Outstanding Faculty Mentorship Award. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am uh, I'm deeply uh, touched and honored uh, to be here. Thank you to, uh, to everyone that's here, and uh, a special thanks to the, the students who nominated me and who really invited me to collaborate with them on, on doing dramatic, important, and, and meaningful work to improve healthcare in this country. And it, for me, it kind of feels like uh, the cool kids invited you to sit at their lunch table you remember that in elementary school where that, you know, so I, I, I kind of got that sense. And, and when I uh, first learned that I was getting this award about mentoring, I kind of flashed back uh, to kind of my, my first awareness of, of mentoring. And it was uh, um, one of my first graduate students 26 years ago, uh, Dr. Dave Williams. And um, I was teaching a class on strategic uh, human resources management. And one of the requirements in the class was to write an article for a non-peer review publication. So you didn't have to use APA style. It was an article that you were gonna um, be able to, to put in a, a regular, normal magazine or newspaper or publication. And uh, you had to write the article, and you also had to write a query letter. And some of you in here don't know what a query letter is. Some of the faculty will remember what those are. Um, and, uh, and you didn't have to actually submit it for publication. Well, Dave actually took the, the energy to submit it for publication, and his article was on mentoring. And it was, a, it was a great article, and uh, he asked me if I would uh, uh, mentor him a after that. And I, uh, he, he was working in Austin, Texas, um, as the quality improvement manager for the paramedic system in Austin, Travis County. And he wanted to have a, a little bit more of a national impact, so I uh, worked with him and introduced him to the largest consulting firm in the paramedic world. And um, he, uh, he got a job there and, uh, and worked there for a while, and then we were... Uh, uh, talking one day, and he said, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a bigger impact. So I um, invited him to, to join me at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement uh, for a conference, and he, uh, he really clicked well with them and, and became uh, one of the Institute's uh, leading uh, improvement scientists. And um, there, somewhere over the last 25 years, uh, things kind of flipped, where instead of me mentoring Dave, Dave has been my mentor, uh, for the last 12 years on improvement science. We have a phone conversation every Friday morning at six o'clock uh, for an hour and have for 12 years um, on the vicissitudes of different, different things related to improvement science. So um, I don't know which of you in this audience are gonna be my next mentor. Some of you in the MSAL program have already started that process, um, but I'm, I'm particularly grateful from that perspective. And, one of the other uh, things I did when I, I learned I was, uh, I was going to be getting this award um, was I asked um, a bunch of my friends, how did it feel when you got your graduate degree? How did, how did, what was the emotion? What did it feel like when you got your graduate degree? And, and people said, you know, relieved or proud or um, excited. One said thirsty. I'm not sure what that was. But, um, 
what I would uh, just in invite you to do just for a moment now is, is think about what's, what's your emotion, what's your feeling right now of earning your graduate degree? How does it feel? And take a, a real deep breath that kind of goes through your whole body and try to lock that feeling into your system. And then kind of take that feeling with you like it was a fuel cell and go out there in the world and make a difference in the world of healthcare. Congratulations, thank you very much. I, I think this belongs to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you learned from um, Mike's accounting that um, your mentors are going to be in your lives for a long, long, long time. And somehow you might even manage to mentor some of them in the process. Um, I, I just want to point out that um, Mike um, does not live in San Francisco or the Bay Area. He flew in from LA this morning suffered and endured a two-hour delay. So we are just glad he made it. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> thanks so much, Mike, and thanks to Mike. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2023 commencement speaker, Dr. Charlie Craig. And I, I, I'm just gonna ad-lib here for a minute. Um, um, Charlie was in Boston, he too, flew in today and it was always touch and go whether he would make it, so we are thrilled that Charlie is here this morning. Dr. Craig is a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry here at UCSF. He is the founder and former director of the Chemical and Chemistry and Chemical Biology Graduate Program, associate director of the Translational Research, and co-director of the Molecular Oncology Program in the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. Dr. Craig received his PhD in chemistry from Columbia and did his postdoctoral work here at UCSF. For those of you who do not know, UCSF really does mean you can stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Craig received, a, I'm sorry, since joining UCSF faculty in 1985, Dr. Craig's research has focused on defining the roles and mechanisms of enzymes, protein degradation machinery, receptors, membrane transporters, and other challenging proteins in complex biological processes, and on developing technologies that facilitate these studies. This work, coupled with his global substrate profiling, antibody engineering, and non-invasive imaging efforts, are providing a better understanding of both the chemical makeup and the biological importance of these critical proteins to aid in rapid detection, monitoring, and control of infectious diseases, neurological disorders, and cancer. Dr. Craig holds 15 patents and has published over 300 articles. I should note here that Dr. Craig was one of the very first UCSF scientists to conduct research at Mission Bay, at our Mission Bay campus, starting in 2003 with the opening of Genentech Hall. At that time, as many of you know, Genentech Hall was the only building at Mission Bay. How time has passed. Dr. Craig is a council member of the American Association of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, a fellow of the American Association of the Advancement of Science and the National Academy of Inventors, and a member of the, National, of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Craig to the stage. I realize that I'm uh, separating you from the hooding ceremony, so I'll be brief. <laughs> thank you, Dean Blake, and thanks for all of you for being here. It is such an honor to participate in this memorialization of something that's very important. It's in such a perfect setting 
this building <clears throat> and these murals on the walls is quite special in the sense of those murals were painted by a very independent, very prolific artist for the 2015 exposition where the world came to San Francisco for a remarkable event that was celebrating the resurgence of San Francisco from the 1906 earthquake. And one of the displays at that exposition was the first telephone line between the East Coast and the West Coast, New York City and San Francisco. And it was a way to begin communications in a different way than they were before. So the resurgence and the communication ideas are both something that I'm gonna come back to. The title that I've chosen is Wow. Now what? So before we get to the now what, let's spend a moment on the wow. Wow, really. I thought my path was difficult, but yours was epic. Think about what you've gotten through. A worldwide pandemic with no treatments. Shelter in place mandates that locked you in your apartments and homes. University wide lockdowns that locked you out of your labs. Massive civil unrest. Extreme weather. A historic labor strike that affected each of you and the individual tragedies that each of you experienced. It seems that everything could have gone wrong, did go wrong. You could have quit, and you know some that did, but you didn't. So embrace the moment and recognize what got you through. Science, in the form of record-breaking diagnostic development, vaccine and drug discovery, and all of the work that each of you have done. Technology, in the form of Zoom calls, <laughs> uh, AlphaFold, GPT, ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, all these things need improvement, so I'm laying them out for opportunities. <laughs> Communicating. Communicating in the form of deep and meaningful discussions with people having diametrically opposed opinions and finding common ground. For example, establishing a labor agreement with individuals that many people didn't necessarily agree with, but you established something for both current and future students. Thank you. And finally, perseverance. In the form of taking on all odds, continuing to show up and get things done in the worst of conditions. There's a saying where I came from, if you can make it through this place, you can make it anywhere. Well, by making it through what you did, you can make it through anything. So have that confidence and take it with you. Some of you are thinking, but, but I'm not successful yet. Uh, don't go there, really. You are successful. Right now, you're remarkably successful. You made it. When you were starting on the path, whenever that was, could you even have imagined being here right now? And someone probably helped you on that path. Some of them may actually be here. And if they're not, I ask you to reach out to them. Let them know that you made it. You're successful. You did it. And now go one step further. Take that and pay it forward. Reach out to someone who needs help. And help them the way that you were helped. That's the way we're going to continue. So what's next? Let's turn to that. Commencement. What's it mean? It's kind of confusing. Is it the end? It's the beginning. I go for it's the beginning. Yes, it's celebrating. It's memorializing the fact that you achieved this goal. But now, commit. we're going to commence. We're going to get on with it. We're going to get into the next things. Some of you know exactly what you want to do. You've already taken that job, or you're about to. Some are still wondering what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you a short story about something that I did, and I learned along the way that might be useful 
to some of you. I call it listening to yourself, to pick on a theme, pick up on a theme that Mike already introduced. So I grew up in a steel mill town in western Pennsylvania called Midland, close to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The steel mill, town, the steel mill was called the Crucible Steel Company. It was known for stainless steel and titanium. These were shiny, bright alloys in what was known as the Rust Belt. Inorganic chemistry. Most people for the past 125 years who were born there die there. And nearly everyone in my class went to work in the steel mill since it paid extremely well with just a high school education. But I thought I might be able to do something else by listening to myself and not other people. In a winding path that did not seem to make sense as I was doing it, and keep that in mind, as you're wondering, is this making sense? Don't worry about it. It's going to make sense when you look back at it. But I ended up graduating from a good school, in chemistry from a good school in New York City. And I came to UCSF. And coming to UCSF was listening to that inner self, that there was something about it that made me say no to all of the advice I was being given, that why in the world would you go to UCSF? I've never even heard of the place. Keep in mind, I was coming from a chemistry department. But there was something about this place that was so special. That feeling was so visceral. I knew that this was going to be the place that I had to try. And what happened? Since I've been here, I've been able to work with some of the best and brightest scientists in the world. They've embraced me because they were willing to share with me what they knew so that I could potentially contribute something to them. Collaboration. I've worked with structural biologists, mass spectrometers, clinicians, infectious disease experts, molecular oncologists, and many of the students that are actually in this room, I've been able to fortunately be able to work with some of them. So what are some of the things that have helped me along the way that might resonate with you? One, what's the opposite of success? Quitting. You know this already. You didn't quit. So keep that confidence. None of us walked out of the womb. We all had to learn how to walk at some point. And the first thing we did was we fell down. So you're going to make that decision. You're going to do something, and then you're going to fail. And it's OK to fail. It's absolutely OK. What's not OK is to quit and not get back up. Without, so fail, but don't lose your soul. Another way, or as Miles Davis put it, it's the next note that makes it good or bad. Second one, enjoy the roller coaster ride. Wow, have we been on a roller coaster ride? Have you been on one? Have you ever been on a roller coaster ride and seen people have a great time while others in the next car are having a miserable time? It's the exact same ride. How can that be? Some are holding on to the rail, white knuckled. Others are having a thrilling ride. You can't control how life throws things at you, but you can control how you handle it. Enjoy the ride, and if you're not, change things so that you are. Life is too long, not short. It's too long to be miserable. Third, you don't have to do it all alone. In high school, I was on a basketball team from one of the smallest high schools in all of Pennsylvania. Yet we won not one, but two state championships. It was a team effort that none of us could have done individually. I was not the best one on the team, but I can contribute things that other ones couldn't and help win those championships. When I was an assistant professor at UCSF, we helped validate HIV protease as a therapeutic target that paved the way for now seven FDA-approved drugs. I contributed something. I didn't lose my individuality by being on that team, but I contributed something much larger than myself by being able to collaborate with people who were so much better at science than I was. But once again, I could add something to the team that was needed, and I'm very proud of that. 
Now, working with other faculty members, we're also currently working on current and future pandemics, so we have a chance to do it again. So that type of collaboration is a hallmark of UCSF, and some of you have experienced it. The ability to work with others who are very good at what they do, so that one plus one, I'm actually good at math, but can be more than two. You'll never forget the people that you went to school with. You're part of this team. So don't lose those touches with one another. Keep in touch with one another. Keep that magic and spread the word about being able to work on things to have a bigger impact. Okay, so I'm going to end with an ancient story that I've modified a bit to share one final thought and that is, great science needs diversity among scientists. There was a village in the jungle where every, everyone in it was blind. A large beast that none of them had ever encountered came into the village, and many villagers fled out of fear. A young child who knew no better led the beast to the elders of the village to see if they could help. The first reached up to touch the tail and said it felt like a snake. The second touched its side, and it was rough and felt like a rhinoceros. The third touched its ear, and it was thin and leathery and said, ah, this is a bat. And the fourth touched the nose and said, this is kind of like a pig, but it's long, but it's a pig. And finally, the last one reached up and touched its tusk and said, oh, this is a unicorn. Of course, this was an elephant and eventually was of great value to the village. So what's the point? Without diversity, scientists think of truth in the same way. They will think of the implications of their work in the same way, and they'll communicate their work to a narrow sector of society. So don't let that happen on your watch. Go forward. We need many touches on the elephant from many different types of thinkers, so collectively you can get it right. So be bold, be inquisitive, be foolish, as Steve Jobs said. Make a difference and have fun. And remember, whether people believe it or not, science is true. <laughs> Go find it. Thank you. So you've heard today that you've succeeded because you have not quit. Make sure you keep doing that. Have you enjoyed the ride? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Have you enjoyed the ride? Keep enjoying the ride. And teamwork really does matter. Thank you so much, Charlie. All right, we are about to get the real show going. The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to the scholarly achievement, the traditional result of the university's fulfillment of its primary duty. In the graduate division, the degrees to be conferred today are the Masters of Advanced Study, the Master of Science, and the Doctor of Philosophy. At this time, I would like to invite our Chancellor, Chancellor Sam, Sam Hoggett, to the podium to offer some remarks to all the graduates and to confer the master's degree. Sam Hoggett is the 10th Chancellor of UCSF, as well as a distinguished pediatrician and a scientist. A native of Australia, Sam joined UCSF in 1982 and has served the university in a variety of capacities throughout the years. He became Dean of the School of Medicine and Vice Chancellor for Medical Affairs in September of 2009, after serving as Interim Dean since December of 2007. He was appointed Chancellor in 2014. Dr. Hoggett is a member of the American Academy of Pediatrics, was elected in 2010 to the Institute of Medicine, part of the National Academy of Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Sam Hoggett.
Thank you, uh, Dean Blake. And before I start, Charlie, that was a, a memorable and magical address, so thank you so much. Um, it is a great pleasure for me to be here with you uh, all this morning as we mark this milestone in your academic careers and your lives. Our goal at UCSF has been to train you for a lifetime of curiosity and discovery. We truly want you to make a difference in the world. We trust that we have prepared you well for the challenges and the opportunities that you will face throughout your careers. Now you in turn leave us your legacy, a university that has been enriched by your time with us. So I thank each and every one of you for your passion, your determination, your scientific rigor, your hard work, and your empathy, all of which help make the fabric of UCSF. Now you've been educated, as has been mentioned a couple of times already this morning, in a time of change, preparing you well, I think, for careers that are sure to be characterized by further changes and challenges, both expected and unforeseen in the decades to come. Science and healthcare alike have made fantastic progress, even in the short time that you've been with us at UCSF. The development of effective coronavirus vaccines and treatments and the rising call for equity are but two examples. You have not only witnessed these advances, but you have contributed to them as young scientists and researchers. Your record here shows that you will doggedly advocate for science, for intellectual curiosity, for empathy, and for a healthy and equitable society, no matter what your perch. Now we cannot predict the next wave, what the next wave of change will look like, nor what that change will demand of each of us in the future. But what we do know is the future is in your hands. We look forward with great anticipation to watching you shape that future. So my warmest congratulations to you all. So now on to the task at hand. First, will the candidates for the Master of Advanced Study in Clinical Research and for the Master of Science please stand. The master's degree is awarded to students who complete a well-balanced and unified program of study and research in an academic or professional field and meet the university requirements for the degree. Recipients of the degree have mastered the subject field and are prepared for more advanced graduate work, research, or a professional career. So by virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Advanced Study in Clinical Research and Master of Science. My congratulations. Congratulations and please be seated. You will be prompted um, to when to stand again, but at this time, I would like to um, call to the stage Drs. Duncan, Nystel, and Carpenter, who have the hardest job to do today. First, the Master of Advanced Study in Clinical Research candidates will be hooded by Professor of Epide Epidemiology and Biostatistics, Dr. Robert Hyatt. Thank you. 
Claris Leong. All the way. <laughs> Suka Moses. The Master of Science Biomedical Imaging graduates will be hooded by the Director of Graduate Studies for the Biomedical Imaging Program, Dr. Susan Novlowski. <laughs> Xu Xian Du. Ashley Caitlin Fung. <laughs> Tayu Lin. Alice Nwok Nguyen. <laughs> Hyung Suk Park. Perm Joe Singh. <laughs> Caitlin Vu. Ningjing Zhang. <laughs> the Master of Science, Chemical and Chemistry chemistry and chemical biology graduate will be hooded by Ian Seipel. Arka Rao.
<laughs> the first graduating class of Master of Science Genetic Counseling graduates will be hooded by the director, Cynthia Morgan, Associate Director Allison Scott, and Research Director Julie Harrisway. <laughs> Laura Michelle Cardoso. Marissa Chen. <laughs> Caitlin Cullen. We're going to get the hoods today. <laughs> Brittany Ann Dela Cruz. Eva Farina. Justin Peng. <laughs> Stanzi Casada. Lindsay Marie Rodriguez. <laughs> Allison Wheeler. Samantha Wheeler. <laughs> Taylor Ann Yamane. The Master of Science Global Health Sciences graduates will be hooded by Program Director, Dr. Christopher Carpenter. <laughs> Vivian T. Chang. Unaga Jadhav.
Seema Nadiri. David Nguyen. The Master of Science, Healthcare Administration, and Interprofessional Leadership graduates will be hooded by Interim Program Director, Lisa Lamel. <laughs> Saima Ismail. Christian Tangrichan. <laughs> Alexandra Braginski. Angel Doe. <laughs> Antonina Freelari. Jeremy Franklin. <laughs> Mary Goldhuff. Gina Goodrich. <laughs> Ken Ken Hill. Fei Huang. <laughs> John Lawan Kao Tiam Sung. Hayren Jenny Kim. <laughs> Janet Kim. Okay, Kyla Jules Amaya.
Sayoni Mukopadi. Muxisteg Muyag Marsuan. Maria Sage. Christian Sanchez. Kushbu Shah. Jennifer Sheldon. Danielle Jessica Bear Schoff. Rosa Weed. The Master of Science, <clears throat> Neuroscience graduate, will be hooded by Dean Blake. Congratulations. <clears throat> Adriana Mercedes Padilla Rohead. The Master of Science, Oral and Craniofacial Sciences graduates will be hooded by Program Director, Dr. Kamal Al-Aryani. <laughs> Moruj Aljishi. Abran Khalid Bakash. The Master of Science, Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Pharmacogenetics graduates will be hooded by Dr. Jennifer Rosenbluth. <laughs> Sigal Aini. The Master of Science Translational Medicine candidates will be hooded by Dr. Shubo Roy. <laughs> Ahmad Abid.
Ulishina Isaiah Awe. Punit Batia. Devin Chen. Subd Davidorj. J. Deo. <laughs> Ines Freudefund. Yi Ten She. Mehika Jane. Aisha Kaba. Sarita Kumari. Catherine Ja Low <laughs> Ayanaka Subia Makadangdang. Roshni Narayanan. <laughs> Anthony Ortega.
Chloe Papadaki. Varun Paresh Patel. Jonathan Pelusi. Raik Rahman. <laughs> Nilo Farm Saeed Tarani. Satyam Talele. <laughs> Ding Tang. Hannah Tong. <laughs> Christian John Ventura. Christian River Vian. can't go on until I say, give a big shout out to the genetics counseling master students. Love the hats, love the hats. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of doctor of philosophy, please rise. The Doctor of Philosophy degree is awarded as the mark of the highest achievement in preparation for active scholarship and research. Recipients of the degree com have completed a rigorous course of study, demonstrated superior scholarship, and made original contributions to their chosen field of knowledge. 
This is the highest degree awarded at academic institutions. Chancellor Coggan. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. My congratulations to you all. You may be seated momentarily. The graduate programs at UCSF are highly interdisciplinary. Their faculty hold departmental appointments in all of UCS UCSF's professional schools. Many of our PhD students were mentored by, collaborated with, or did rotations with professors in more than one school. They have formed relationships with these faculty in addition to their dissertation advisors. In the spirit of this partnership, I would like to invite Deans King, Reddy, Giacomoni, and to, to come forward and join Chancellor Hoggett and EVCP Lucy with me in congratulating these candidates. First, our PhD candidates in biochemistry and molecular biology. Will the hooders for biochemistry and molecular biology please come forward to hood your graduates. Veronica Escalante. Okay. I see. Jocelyn Lopez will be hooded by Frank McCormick. Elisa Nia Van Gowska will be hooded by David Agard. Shari Nodings will be hooded by David Agard. Roberto Efrahin Diaz will be hooded by Deanne Duncan and James Fraser. <laughs> Evelyn Hernandez will be hooded by Deanne Duncan.
Now our PhD candidates in bioengineering. Will the hooders for the bioengineering please come forward to hood your graduates. Nadia Ayad will be hooded by Deanne Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. Gauri Sriram Chaintke will be hooded by Tehal Desai. Olivia Annette Creasy will be hooded by Zev Gartner. Ken Kenneth Gao will be hooded by Sharimla Mahamandar. <laughs> Unikai Thalpadi will be hooded by Sharima Mahumadar. <laughs> Jasmine Hu will be hooded by Daniel Vigneron. Imad Kwaja will be hooded by Bo Huang. Jasmine King will be hooded by Deanne Duncan. Jesse Rachel Leo will be hooded by Edward Chang. <laughs> Faye Tan will be hooded by Pedro Larson. I'm playing uh, double duty today, so let me just get my bearings together. Hold on one moment. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, our PhD candidates in biological and medical informatics, will the hooders for the biological and medical informatics uh, program, please come forward to hood your graduates. George Christopher Hartuloris, who will be hooded by Jimmy Yi. Wesley Marin, who will be hooded by Jill Hollenbach.
Arjun Scott Nanda, who will be hooded by Nikkei Blake. <laughs> Kala Martin, who will be hooded by Katie Pollard. <laughs> Maureen Elizabeth Pittman, who will also be hooded by Katie Pollard. Nishith Reddy, who will be hooded by Wendell Lim. Now our PhD candidates in biomedical sciences. Will the hooders for biomedical sciences please come forward to hood your graduates. Irene Chin, who will be hooded by Melanie Ott. Vikas Dagubadi, who will be hooded by Bjorn Schrin. Jean Marie Rose Gonzalez, who will be hooded by Tiffany Schmartmitt. Kimberly Cam Hoy, who will be hooded by Nikkei Blake. Maxine Nelson, who will be hooded by Nikkei Blake. <laughs> Catherine Tan, who will be hooded by Fred Chang. Wade Valance, who will be hooded by Christopher Allen. Now our PhD candidate in biophysics. Will the hooder for biophysics please come forward to hood your graduate? <laughs> Stephanie Vankovich, <laughs> who will be hooded by James Frazier. Now 
now are PhD candidates in cell biology. Will the Hooders for Cell Biology please come forward to hood your graduates? Natasha McCurgy Prudy, who will be hooded by Orion Wiener. Manuela Richter, who will be hooded by Sophie Dumont. <laughs> now, our PhD candidates in chemistry and chemical biology. Will the Hooders for Chemistry and Chemical Biology please come forward to hood your graduates? Sergei Andreevich Pormal, who will be hooded by Robert Stroud. Taya Sean Wu, who will be hooded by Nicole, Nikkei Blake. Now, our PhD candidates in developmental and stem cell biology. Will the Hooders for developmental and stem cell biology please come forward to hood your graduates? Nicole Kutsodendris, hooded by Dr. Nikkei Blake. Beatrice Alvarado, hooded by Dr. Bjorn Schur. <laughs> Arpana Arjun McKinney, hooded by Georgia Pangiotakis. Nathaniel Paul Meyer, hooded by Dr. Todd Nystool. <laughs> Anthra Thirumale Rao, hooded by Dr. Todd Nystool. Lila Nearing, hooded by Dr. Sophie Dumont. <laughs> K. 
Karishma Pratt, hooded by Dr. Saul Vieda. Ryan Samuel, hooded by Dr. Faranak Fatahi. Now our PhD candidates in epidemiology and translational science. Will the hooders for epidemiology and translational science please come forward to hood your graduates. Christina Van Deng, hooded by Dr. Mar Maria Gleemore. Sapphire Menin Adina McKenzie Sampson. Hooded by Laura Jalif Palaski. Erica Meza Lumen, hooded by Dr. Jacqueline Torres. Eduardo Santiago Rodriguez, hooded by Dr. Robert Hyatt. Now our PhD candidate in genetics. The graduate will be hooded by Dean Blake. Benjamin Whitman Herkin. Now our PhD candidates in global health sciences. Will the hooders for the global health sciences please come forward to hood your graduates. Lucia Abascal Miguel, hooded by Dr. Ali Mirzazadeh.
Canis Elizabeth Christian, hooded by Dr. Gabriel Shami. Jane Keyes Fieldhouse, hooded by Dr. Elizabeth Fair. <laughs> Sarah Galilee, hooded by Dr. Jennifer Smith. Now, our PhD candidate in History of Health Sciences. Will the hooder for History of Health Sciences please come forward to hood your graduate? Xinyi She, who will be hooded by Dorothy Porter. Now our PhD candidate in medical anthropology. Will the hooder for medical anthropology please come forward to hood your graduate? Fabian Fernandez, hooded by Ian Whitmarsh. Now our PhD candidates in neuroscience. Will the hooders for neuroscience please come forward to hood your graduates? Michelle Kimberly Cahill, who will be hooded by Kira Hanskanzer. Francis Cho, who will be hooded by Jean Paz. <laughs> Angela Chow Matcham who will be hooded by Jeanette Heyer. <laughs> Victoria Sayo Turner, who will be hooded by Mason Karabak. Now, our PhD candidates in oral and cranial facial sciences. Will the hooders for oral and fa cranial facial sciences please come forward to move your hood your graduates? And you are already here. I love it. Uh, Ramin Farhad, Farhad, excuse me, who will be hooded by Aaron Tward. Nguyen, who will be hooded by Rich Schneider.
Now, our PhD candidates in pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacogenomics. Will the hooders for PSPG please come forward to hood your graduates? Vincent Chang will be hooded by Deanna Kurtz. Jacqueline Page Ernst will be hooded by Deanna Karst. Janice Go will be hooded by Deanna Karst. Ki Hyun Kim will be hooded by Wendell Lim. <laughs> Michelle Wang will be hooded by Atul, Atul Boot. Chase Marcus Webb will be hooded by Deanne Duncan. Okay, and last and certainly not least, and I know both of these graduates that are going to come up, so I'm super excited to be saying your names. Um, now, our PhD candidates, hold on, I'm on the wrong page, in sociology. The hooders are already here, so we're rocking and rolling. Nicole Marie Foti, who will be hooded by Janet Shim. <laughs> And Jessica Harrison, who will be hooded by Janet Shim. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
I like how I don't have to prompt this crowd at all. <laughs> Just do it. Graduates, your fields are evolving rapidly. Nothing quite like watching an evolution. AI is changing both medicine, science, sociology, law. It's changing everything. And right on cue, you, each of you, are leaders that will shepherd us through this evolution. We need your leadership. We need your creativity. We need your solutions. And most of all, we need your integrity and your compassion. Thank you for leaving UCSF a better place than you found it. Congratulations. <clears throat>
All right, now you have been taking lots of photos. When you share your photos today on social media, please use the hashtag UCSFGrads so that we can find you. Our comms team wants to elevate your pictures, so please make sure you do that. On behalf of Carter Washington, the president of the Graduate Divisions Alumni Association who joined us today, we encourage you to be active in our Grad Div Alumni Association. It's a fantastic group of um, people in that group, people that you can go talk to about careers, uh, for career advice, or maybe you wanna join if you're staying in the Bay Area, and even if you are not, there's a little thing called Zoom that will allow you to participate. Now, there's no celebration without a gift. So thanks to the Alumni Association for donating gifts to all of you, which you will receive on your way out. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, the Alumni Association is also hosting a Grad Dev Alumni Mixer next Thursday, May 25th at Spark. So if you're in town, free food, free drink, good company. Go join them. Can I just ask that, that you please register? I know this is a foreign concept to you all, but if you are going, can you just please register so that they can get the tickets right, okay? Thank you, everyone. And now, finally, it is over. <laughs> Congratulations again to you, graduates of the 2023 Graduate Division graduating class. Thank you. I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna ask the audience if you would just hang tight, allow the platform party and the graduates to go out. Graduates, when you go out, please don't stop in that first um, lobby. Go all the way out to the end and your family members and the rest of the faculty will be there waiting to greet you and to congratulate, congratulate you. Thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day.